safe are PUSD schools in light of recent LA shootings? Local school, school officials are talked to CCN. A former Pasadena police officer sues the county in a sexual harassment case and wins. Also, a new musical at the Pasadena Playhouse. All this and much more next on CCN. Crown City News, your news, your Do neighborhood. Do you have a great business idea? The Pasadena Enterprise Zone can help. Enterprise Zone, open for business. Live, work, play and shop in the North Lake Village. See for yourself when you visit our village. Watching CCN Crown City News, your news, your neighborhood. I'm Sunita Joshua Madison. Our top story. In light of recent Southland school shootings, we asked PUSD officials what they're doing to keep students safe. CCN's Nikki Ibarra joins us live with more. Nikki, what do you have for us? Hi, Sunita. It's a nightmare for parents hearing that their child's school is locked down or worse yet, that a shooter is on campus. In the last 15 years, we are aware of two incidents involving a gun on PUSD campuses. A lockdown at Blair because of a gun on campus in 2008 and a shooting at Washington Middle School in 1995 that injured two students. Students. After what police call an accidental shooting took place at Gardena High School recently, we wanted to find out what PUSD was doing to keep the school safe. Alex Ogans picks her kids up every day from this Pasadena Middle School. She hasn't had to worry about major security issues here, like the shooting that happened recently at Gardena High School when a gun went off in a student's backpack, wounding two other students. But she takes an active role in trying to keep that kind of danger away from her kids. The security here is great. Um, as soon as uh, everyone's been dropped off, they lock all the gates. On, on all the sides and the only way you can come in is um, through the front entrance and go through the office. That may have been the case at her kids' school, but at another Southeast Pasadena school, we noticed that a padlocked gate had a hole that just about anyone could squeeze through. We also wanted to know whether the school used metal detectors to keep dangerous weapons off of campuses. It's something Sonia Rodarte, Director of Child Welfare, Attendance and Safety, says has come up in committee meetings. Things are reviewed and this is one of the topics of metal detectors. Detectors. It's in our policy. The PUSD website says that school safety and emergency preparedness is a priority. And because of that, Sonia Rodarte says she meets with parents to discuss safety among passing the campuses. We have not needed to fully implement the metal detectors because our campuses are readily safe and um, productive learning environments for our students. PTA meetings and room parent meetings, we have talked about it and um, always, we always um, think of new ways to have the school safer. Mainly having any visitors, um, volunteers sign in the off into the office and um, they need to um, say exactly where they're going, wear a sticker, that kind of thing. They may have their work cut out for them. Before school officials said they did not want us to talk to any principals about this story, we went to another Pasadena school to find a principal to ask about safety issues. To our surprise, I walked around for nearly five minutes, looking into different rooms, searching for the principal's office. One staff member even walked right by me, but never said a word. Past incidents, including a 1995 shooting, had led administrators to implement metal detector wands and even canine units. But as a local school's watchdog tells us the program stopped for different reasons, including high costs for training and certifications. Sonia Rodarte says now the school's focus is on increasing communication with students as a way to help keep campuses safe. I would say in order to ensure a safe and orderly learning environment, if we have that ongoing communication with students, I believe a lot of situations would not get to the level and escalate to the level that they do. 
Now, it's important to know that I searched for the school principal after school was dismissed. It was finals week, which meant classes were out early, but there were many students all around campus and an after school programs were still going on. Also, it's possible that school staff may have mistaken me for a student. Still, the main answer about what the PUSD is doing for school security seems to be communicating more with students so that anyone who's aware of a threat on campus will know to go immediately to school officials and let them know. Sunita, back to you. Well, thanks for that report, Nikki. Uh, for more information about PUSD school safety, you can visit PasadenaUSD.org. Well, we wanted to give school officials a chance to talk with us more in depth about safety, so we invited the school board vice president, Renata Cooper, to join us live. Thanks for being here, Renata. You're very welcome. So you saw Nikki's report. Um, what did you think about the gaps in the gates, the campus gates? Uh, the the gap in the gate at the, on the Blair campus seemed to me like something that happens when your schools are open to public use. You may know that we have a, we have, we have a shared use ordinance with the city, and particularly at Blair, the tennis courts are in heavy use by members of the community on the weekends. They are not just used by our students. And one of the byproducts of that is that there are increased maintenance, there are increased issues. And if you look at that, where the gates were, they were over by the tennis courts, which are in heavy use. I understand some of the neighbors are actually complaining that they're getting so much use. But that's that's what we wanted. We want the green space to be shared. Uh, it looks to me like somebody opened that to have a shortcut to the tennis courts, and I think it's difficult. Uh, we are not trying to have our schools be armed camps, and that that's one of the things that happened, and so I think they just need to tighten that up, and I don't know. Uh, the, the city's responsible for the space on the weekends when, when they're open for public use, and there's supposed to be a patrolling and a monitoring of if, if anything comes up, they're supposed to let us know and take care of it. And so that just seems like something that had not been taken care of yet. It's. Uh, Jeff. It's 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 in keeping with what we're trying to do, but I but the bigger part of your story when you spoke about the 1995 and the metal detectors and the dogs and all that stuff. My son was in school then, mm -hmm. and actually uh, I was so upset about the uh, the presence of metal detectors and dogs that initially I did not send him to uh, the public school. I sent him to private school because I didn't want him treated that way. I don't like the notion of schools being on camp. But then he came back the second year, and I think that the whole thing with the, when we had metal detectors. They, we had one set, and they rotated among campuses, so the kids never really knew where they, were going to, where they were going to be, so there was that issue of randomness. I never liked the ideas of dogs on campus, even though I know there are industries, and I like dogs, but mm -hmm. I just don't want our children treated like criminals, yes. even, uh, even our adolescents. Absolutely. So what do you think, you know, as far as with uh, what happened at Gardena High School? I mean, did that force any changes with PUSD? Did that, you know, just as a reminder to, you know, kind of reinforce some of the Less Gardena did, than the, what happened in the Valley. We, we reviewed our lockdown policies to make sure that all the classrooms actually we have a meeting this week to go over that we want to make sure that every classroom has a situ have the materials that they need uh, in, in case you're put in a lockdown situation because that was also one of the problems when we had the lockdown situation at Blair where there was no gun found and that actually the kid that with the, with the gun that was supposed to have been in school was found hours later at a, a student's home well given the lockdown I don't think they got it out of school and took it home okay. I think it was never there I think the bigger issue from Absolutely. my perspective is uh, and it's something that the, the parents said Communicating with your child, with your student, particularly your adolescent, to let school officials know what's going on, because the uh, the boy in Carson who had the gun in his backpack, apparently this was not the first time he bought it, and his peer, his friends knew he, he bought it, and they, he, and they knew why, and so there's this whole issue in terms about why did this happen, how did this happen. So uh, if, if if the kids aren't talking to their parents, you know, I mean, what is the school doing to proactively make sure that you know? It, Obviously, you know, most kids, if they're going to have a gun, aren't, might not be telling others. So, or, you know, you're saying he, the friends were Adolescents told, always tell the their friends. How is school proactively handling this? Adolescents always tell their friends, and I don't think you adults can crack the code of adolescent signer. They had metal detectors at Carson. He, it still, it didn't make But any, they weren't being it, it used, didn't make, correct? But it didn't make any difference because the, the, the kids knew and weren't telling. 
and, and plus they they also knew that they could bring that because there weren't the random checks happening. They knew they weren't the random well, checks. you know, I, I think the main important thing about this story is just uh, as a reminder, you know, for the community, for PUSD, you know, making sure, uh, you know, it's it's always important to do these checks before an incident than after an incident. So we're all on the same side of not wanting any incidences at PUSD, um, and you know, it's always good to have reminders to you know make sure that our safety you know the the protocols are being followed our campuses are safe we are we are striving towards community based centers not armed camps absolutely and uh, i think when you get to get adolescents to Okay. Tell you what's going on, that's always okay. tricky. Well, communication is definitely important, and we want to thank you so much for coming on and uh, uh, telling us a little bit more about PUSD. Okay. okay. Thank welcome. you so much. Uh, meteorologist Curtis Peak will let us know if this mild weather is here to stay. That's next on CCN Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood. We'll be right back. <laughs>